Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for the webinar about OWEB's new statewide irrigation modernization grant offering. We have about half the attendees that we were expecting. We're gonna go ahead and get started though in the interest of time and hopefully some other folks will be joining. Um, I'll do quick introductions. So I'm Renee Davis. I'm the Fire, Klamath and Drought Programs Manager at the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board or OWEB. We have two other OWEB staff here with me, Amy Charette, who's the Drought Programs Coordinator and Max Chabra, who is our administrative support for the Drought Relief Program. Heidi Hartman, who is the primary point for the statewide irrigation modernization grant offering, is sick today, so not able to join us. Um, but just as you're doing um, follow-up, if you have additional questions about the grant offering, Heidi will be primary point. Amy also is a great resource. Um, so feel free to reach out to either one of them after today's webinar, if you have questions. Um, so we are recording this webinar. Um, we will post it onto the OWEB website um, after the uh, wrap up today, just for folks who weren't able to join um, so that they have the same benefit um, of hearing a little bit about the program um, and hopefully seeing some of the questions that you all have and the responses from OWEB staff about that. Um, so in terms of the flow for today, um, we will plan to just give an overview of the um, statewide irrigation modernization grant offering. And then we'll walk through the program materials, so both the program guidance and the budget guidance that we've developed for the statewide irrigation modernization program. Um, you all will be muted and off camera, obviously. Um, so please use the question and answer function at the bottom of your screen um, to type in your questions. Those will go to OWEB staff. And then what we'll do is compile those. Amy will read off the questions and then we'll tag team on responses. Um, if there are some questions that are more specific to a particular location or scenario, we um, may propose to follow up with you just so we have um, thorough understanding of, of what the questions are under a particular scenario before responding. Um, and I think with that, we'll just go ahead and jump in. It looks like we've had at least one more participant join, so hopefully a few other folks may, may patch in also. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now. And so let's see. So Amy, could you give me a thumbs up if you're able to see the drought relief webpage? Okay, perfect, great, thank you. Um, so we'll start by just um, orienting a bit in um, the drought relief uh, funding that OWEB received during the um, 2021 special legislative session. Um, so we received funding to administer a whole host of drought relief related programs. These are outlined on the website that you see here. I'm going to scroll down through these. You have a sense of some of the offering soil conservation in Jefferson County, Klamath Off Channel Livestock Watering Grant, um, some irrigation modernization funding specific to North Unit Irrigation District. And then here is the statewide irrigation modernization grants that we have just launched within the last week or so. Um, so just wanted to, again, give a little bit of grounding um, in some of the program highlights. So the program does provide funding intended to be used as a um, match for um, irrigation modernization, modernization projects around the state. So the intent is that um, these types of projects should protect or restore natural watershed or ecosystem functions in order to improve stream flows. Um, so please make sure that as you're listening today, you're um, thinking about things through that lens. So as I mentioned, we have developed some um, materials for um, helping you as potential applicants to navigate the irrigation modernization grant program. So we'll be walking through the program guidance and then also the, um, the budget specific guidance for this particular grant program. This webpage, though, does include some other helpful information, um, such as the um, OWEB guidance for our online application system, and then also the overarching um, OWEB budget guidance, too. So just wanted to um, make sure that you had uh, this background information. And then also, it does list um, specifics about the grant cycle. So currently, our plan is to offer one cycle for the statewide irrigation modernization. That opened last week, August 1st, and the deadline is towards the end of September, September 29th at 5 p.m. And as I mentioned earlier, Heidi is the primary point for this particular grant offering, and Amy 
um, also is a great resource. You can reach out to either one of them at any point if you have questions. So we're gonna go over now to the overview document. And hopefully this is zoomed in enough. Amy, can you give a sense, um, again, with either camera on or thumbs up? Okay, it looks good. Um, so try to zoom in so that folks are able to see this. So we'll just be walking through this program guidance for the statewide irrigation modernization grant program. So again, some of the background information here that I mentioned, intent is to support matching grants um, for irrigation modernization projects around the state. This is um, funding that was provided by the legislature during special legislative session in 2021. Um, this is general fund as a fund source, a bit different than some of the other OWEB funding that some of you may have applied for previously. And specific intent with that funding is to help support mo irrigation moderniz modernization projects such as piping or canal lining and associated activities. And again, highlighting that um, intent to protect or restore natural watershed function, natural watershed or ecosystem function um, with the intent of helping to improve stream flows. So given the general fund fund source um, for this particular program, the lifespan of these funds is relatively short. So we have until June 30th of 2023 to utilize these funds. And this is not only having the funds obligated, but also fully expended by the end of this biennium. In terms of eligible applicants, given the legislative language, irrigation districts within the state of Oregon are eligible to apply for this funding. So very focused set of applicants here. Um, in terms of the uh, lifespan retroactively of the funding though, we are able to, um, for awarded grants and for eligible activities within those grants, provide retroactive funding back to December 14th of 2021, which is when the bill that um, funded this particular grant program was signed into law. In terms of the, um, pro the individual um, project dollar amounts for which you can apply. So, the grant awards will be capped at a maximum of $750,000 per application. I do want to note that for the entire statewide program, we have just over $1.5 million for grant awards. So we um, absolutely um, are open to you proposing projects up to $750,000, but also want to highlight here that smaller funding requests are welcome also, given that um, we are still going to need to determine the demand on this program relative to the available funding. And then ultimately, after we go through the technical review of the applications that have been received, we'll determine final grant awards based on a consideration of that total fund amount and the number of eligible um, and, and well-qualified projects that come in to the program. So I mentioned here that we do have a particular, a specific uh, document outlining some of the budget guidance for this program. We'll walk through that shortly. Um, again, just highlighting the um, intent of the funding from a legislative standpoint. Some of the expectations in terms of this program is, is a demonstration within the grant application that local partners are working together to coordinate activities in a way that really leverages strengths and maximizes the efficiency of the work that's happening on the ground. Um, so the eligible activities within the statewide irrigation modernization grant program really fall into to two bins. First, the required activities and then the secondary activities. So, um, the required activities, you must pick at least one of these activities within the online grant application that you're proposing to implement. So it could be piping, irrigation canals, ditches, laterals, lining those, or upgrading existing infrastructure such as flumes or pipes. Once you select one or more of the required activities, then you can access secondary activities. Those though you cannot come into the grant um, offering and apply only for secondary activities those have to be paired with one or more of the required activities. So you can see here the list of secondary activities um, that are eligible. This is not an exhaustive list, but just to give you a sense of, of some of the um, supporting activities that could be paired with uh, required activities. So for example, pump installation, um, installation of flow measurement devices, you can see the list there. And certainly if you have any questions about the projects you're contemplating, feel free to reach out to Heidi or Amy or myself. We're happy to answer questions about those. Um, in terms of some of the considerations um, as you are completing a grant application and, and that we'll be considering during the review process, 
So given the short lifespan of these dollars, absolutely you'll want to be able to describe the applicant organization's demonstration to, um, or uh, capacity rather, um, to implement, to plan and implement the proposed actions within the short time frame um, for this legislative funding. In terms of the match, um, as with other o OWEB programs, absolutely we encourage 25% match for those other OWEB programs that's required. However, given the general fund fund source of this and the drought really focus for this offering, we will allow applicants to come in with less than 25% match. Um, as you're um, thinking through potential match funding for your project, you definitely would um, want to emphasize how this funding, the state funding would leverage, leverage other funding sources, um, including certainly the PL566 program that Natural Resources Conservation Service offers, but it could be other programs too that this could provide helpful matching funds for. And just in terms of um, full transparency for awarded grants, we will require post-implementation status reporting for a period of five years. And so I talked already about the open grant cycle that we currently have underway. So August 1 to September 29th. Um, here I want to highlight a few things, and this is true for um, all of our grant offerings. Um, Amy, I'm getting an unstable internet um, notice. So if you're having trouble hearing me, um, please come on camera or let me know um, verbally if there are any issues. Um, so in terms of applying for our a grant with OWEB using our online grant application system, um, a few things that are really important to keep in mind. One, we strongly recommend that you submit your grant applications at least 24 hours prior to the deadline um, in case there's any um, surprise when you're going through the verification or submission process. Um, and it will allow you time to address any of those issues. And all applications must be received by the 5 p.m. deadline on um, the set application date, in this case, September 29th, and no exceptions will be made. In terms of late submissions, um, absolutely. If you're contemplating applying for this program, please review all of the grant application guidance and information, this document, the um, budgetary, document for the program and within the online grant application, please pay attention to um, the supporting information about each of the application questions, including the I buttons, which provide some um, helpful rules of the road um, to applicants as you're coming in. Um, so do make sure also to check and make sure that you've um, submitted all required uploads um, that are included with the grant application. And then in terms of awarded grants for those folks um, who are grantees um, under this particular program, um, we will require uh, quarterly billing and progress reporting to ensure we're seeing um, good progress being made on implementation and spending um, of those general fund dollars. So in terms of the evaluation process, we're um, using the OWEB restoration grant administrative rules as a foundation in terms of the evaluation criteria. The grant applications coming in for this program will be evaluated relative to demonstrated need um, in, when considering the legislative intent um, that I discussed earlier relative to the proposed activities um, that are included in the grant application. And some of the um, considerations that we've talked about previously um, improving stream flows by protecting or restoring watershed or ecosystem function, um, projects that use established approaches to improve st stream flows. So there is a preference for use of the allocation of conserved water program um, under this uh, grant offering where that's feasible. Um, and there is space within the grant application to describe whether it's the conserved water program or another uh, uh, water use agreement that's being utilized under the proposed project. Um, the organizational capacity piece that I mentioned in terms of you know, quick turnaround relative to planning and implementation of these dollars, and then also the coordination among local partners. Um, when you look in the online grant application system, you will see some um, informational questions related to tribal coordination, equity, and climate considerations. So just a heads up, 
about those. And then uh, for the grant review process, we will um, convene a team of knowledgeable agency staff, both state and federal agency staff who are quite familiar with drought impacts, irrigation modernization um, projects and programs, and also have um, some experience and knowledge to offer in terms of organizational capacity um, and coordination considerations. Um, we absolutely will take into consideration that this is a statewide program. There are different geographies involved and we'll be reaching out to um, local agency representatives as part of the review process. So in terms of some additional information, a few of these I mentioned previously, um, the overarching OWEB uh, online application guidance could be really helpful for folks who are new to OWEB's programs, um, less familiar with our online system. And then um, just there are some training videos that can be helpful, again, in getting to know OWEB's um, process, either for applying for grants online or understanding insurance requirements to come in for our grants. And then we do have Heidi and Amy's contact information listed here. Um, so I think next I'll jump over to the budget guidance. I see Amy's coming on screen. So maybe there's a question. Okay, we have one question on what is the schedule and process after 20. Amy, it may be my connection, but you were cutting in and out. Can you repeat that? Sure. What is the schedule and process after September 29th? The schedule and process after September 29th. Okay, so um, September 29th is the grant deadline. I'll scroll back up here. Um, so we are in the process of convening the review team now. Um, I would estimate that within two to three weeks after the deadline is when we would convene the technical review team meeting um, to discuss and review the applications. But prior to that time, a web staff internally go through an eligibility review of the applications that have um, been received. We then circulate eligible applications out to the review team members and need to give them time to review those. We'll hold the review team again, estimating you know, within two to three weeks of the deadline, giving folks time to read the set of applications that have come in. Um, and then following that, staff will go through a process to uh, write up the um, reviews into evaluations and work through the grant re re award process. So this is where um, we're estimating that within four to six weeks following the deadline, award decisions will have been made and we'll be engaging with the successful grantees in the process to get um, grant agreements in place. So Amy, just let me know if there are any um, follow-ups from that. Okay, super. So we'll jump over to the budget guidance document now. Hopefully you can see that I have it on the same Zoom level. So this budget guidance is specific to the statewide irrigation modernization program. So we develop um, this guidance in the instance that there is something that is um, different or unique about a particular grant program as compared with a web standard budget guidance. And given that we are utilizing general fund dollars um, to support the irrigation modernization program along with the other drought relief offerings, um, there are a few things that are unique. So we've developed this to, to help you focus on some of those additional budgetary considerations. Um, so one is that um, they're definitely with the general fund programs is an emphasis on on the ground work. So this is not to say that you cannot build in some amount of indirect or some other project costs, but really being mindful of keeping those to a minimum to um, demonstrate that the majority of the funding is going to um, on the ground work related to irrigation modernization. modernization. Um, again, this is just really underscoring that the eligible activities for the program are divided into two categories. You have to come in for at least one. You can come in for multiple, but at least one of the required activities outlined here to then be able to propose um, companion or complementary secondary activities as we discussed previously. Um, so just really um, making sure to, to highlight there. Um, and then some of the things we have talked about previously, but just to, to reiterate um, for um, 
successful grants and uh, for eligible costs and activities within those expenses can be retroactive back to December 14th of 2021. The receipt requirements will re remain the same as for other OWEB grants, but there is some space for retroactivity. Um, on this work. And then as we talked about previously, the award cap will be $750,000, but absolutely smaller funding requests are welcome given um, consideration about the total uh, pot of grant funding available for the statewide program. So again, just uh, reiterating what we had talked about previously. Um, the budget categories do not allow for contingencies um, for this program, just given um, the limited pot of funding available and the relatively quick time frame. Certainly though, as you're contemplating um, your budget and developing your budget, if you have questions given um, issues such as you know, recent cost increases that you might be facing around materials um, or supplies, please feel free to reach out to a web staff to talk through questions you may have about that. Um, promotional activities and extensive stakeholder engagement are not allowed under this offering. And you can see there are also some other um, disallowed um, costs, websites, meeting room rental, software purchase, et cetera. Equipment purchase is allowed. However, it would need to be just justified and it will be evaluated within the context of um, its necessity for achieving the project outcome. So if you have questions about um, might a particular piece of equipment be um, reasonable to request in uh, your grant application, feel free to reach out to a web staff to talk through that. Equipment usage rates are allowable um, and rental rates um, for different equipment may be um, uh, charged um, by grantees, but do know that um, a web fiscal staff may come back with questions or requesting additional information about um, rental rates and in terms of calculations. Um, indirect costs are allowed within the program, but going back to my comment previously about um, really maximizing on the ground work, we are capping indirect costs at 10%. So for any entities that do have a federally negotiated indirect cost rate, the difference between that 10% um, cap um, and your, your particular cost rate can be used as match. Um, so if you have questions about that, certainly uh, reach out to OWEB staff. Um, and in cases of using um, a, a contractor, having any sub awards within that, again, just being mindful of minimizing indirect costs. And then post-grant costs are allowed within this program given the five-year post-implementation status reporting. So then just a few other items we've talked about previously, the requirement for quarterly um, billing and progress reporting. Um, in terms of advances, we will allow those within this program, but um, all of those must be um, essentially proven up by March 31st of 2023, given the timeframe for the program. Um, again, um, talking here about the funding end date and then the quarterly progress um, and billing that's required. And then just to underscore all spending and all activities proposed must be completed by the June 20th 30th, 2023 20, deadline for those activities that are funded with the state general funds under these grants. And then again, this is just a reminder about the post implementation status reporting. So that covers it in terms of walkthrough of both the program guidance and the particular statewide irrigation modernization budget guidance. So I'll check with Amy and see if any other questions have come in via the Q&A. We do not have any more questions right now. Okay, so maybe we'll give folks another minute or so to type something in in the event that you have questions. Um, and if you need some time to ponder um, all of this information, I know it was a lot, um, that's perfectly okay, but feel free to reach out to OWEB staff. Okay, we do have uh, another question. Um, and this is, is this meant to be used in conjunction with the OWRD ACW program? And what is the main reason we would apply for this grant and not the ACW program? Um, I, I believe I understand the question, but I, um, I, I, you may need to ask a follow-up. So the allocation of conserved water 
program is a program within the water resources department um, to essentially um, document and ensure in-stream protection of um, conserved water. Um, so as noted in the program guidance, and I'll hop back over here. Um, there is a preference for use of the allocation of conserved water program. So that's more of an administrative and um, an administrative process that you would go through with water resources department. Um, and so grants provided under this program do have a preference for use of that water resources department program. Um, so from that standpoint, there's a connection between the two. I know that water resources department does have a number of other funding programs that are not administrative in nature, but are actually either grant or loan programs. Um, and so certainly if one or more of those programs is a better fit, then absolutely take advantage of that funding source and, and pursue that. Um, this is really an additional opportunity um, provided as part of the legislative um, investment in drought relief, I think, to help um, provide an additional source of funding um, that can serve as state match um, for important irrigation modernization projects that are ready to hit the ground running and may need some state match or non-federal match um, as they're working through other funding programs such as the federal PL 566 program. So hopefully that helped to one, demonstrate the connection between this grant offering and Water Resources Department's allocation of conserved water, but also recognizing that they at WRD may have some other programs that could be good, other funding programs that could be um, viable fits for the types of projects you're contemplating. Thanks, Renee. We have a few more questions. Um, what is the expected time frame for approval and disbursement of advances or billing requests? Um, that is, I would say within one month is absolutely um, what we aim for. Um, oftentimes, our payments are processed much more quickly than that. Um, that being dependent though on a complete payment request package coming in the door. So it's really hard for me to predict, I would say if a, if a complete payment package is um, submitted with all of the required pieces, um, it would probably be closer to a one week turnaround um, for payment to be provided. But again, that's dependent on all of the necessary um, receipts, um, correct documentation to be um, included and that is where some of the resources on the website such as the videos I mentioned and there um, is specific guidance kind of uh, how to for grantees who are doing billing um, to help kind of walk you through and give you a checklist so certainly there are some resources that I think can help ensure that the right information is coming in in the payment request to expedite maybe even again down to a, a one week turnaround for payments to be processed. And Amy, let me know if I've missed anything in any of these questions. Sure, thanks. Um, okay, the next question is who is allowed to apply for this grant and are there any restrictions? So there are restrictions. So irrigation districts are the targeted um, eligible applicants under this program, given um, the legislative um, intent with the program. We understand that there may be uh, you know, a few other categories of special districts that are not specifically called irrigation districts that may be called a water district, but they essentially are serving in the same role as irrigation districts um, around the state. So I, um, if you have questions about the type of entity that might be applying, definitely reach out to Heidi, Amy, or myself to help work through questions. But the focus is intended to be for irrigation districts. Thanks, Renee. Next question is just clarification on the 25% matching funds. Um, they are encouraged, but not required. And they just wanted to make sure that was correct. That is correct. Um, we absolutely like to see folks bringing in um, match to the degree that they're able to and meeting or exceeding 25% is fantastic and recognizing that these funds were targeted as part of a drought relief program. And we 
don't want to hamstring folks from being able to come in for the funds if they're not able to make it up to that um, very specific 25% mark. Thanks, Renee. The next question, I think we'll probably have to follow up with an email, but I'll go ahead and read it out. Um, our project stakeholders, the Highland Ditch, are submitting a petition for Douglas County, Oregon Irrigation District status. Will they qualify for the grant proposal while their status is being reviewed? Yeah, so we would want to follow up on that. Thanks for that question. Exactly the types of um, questions we want folks asking and thinking through. So it would be really great to follow up on that to learn a little bit more about what that um, application process is status and timing so we can respond as accurately as possible. So please make sure to um, maybe put into the um, question box your contact information so that um, Amy and Heidi can follow up. Thanks for that question. Thanks, Renee. The next one um, is about the secondary funding. Um, so does secondary funding include deepening of nearby domestic wells, which may be impacted by piping or lining of the irrigation canals? Um, I think we probably would want to follow up and get a bit more information. My initial inclination is likely not, but again, knowing that this is a very site specific um, question, I think we would probably want to understand more. Um, before making a final determination. So I guess same request as the last um, person who posed a question, please make sure we have your contact information so we can follow up on that one. And that is all the questions that we have right now. All right, so we'll give folks another minute or so in case any of those responses prompted additional questions. At least on my Q&A, Amy, it looks like maybe another one or two came in, but I could ha be having a lag time because I'm sharing screen. Um, we do have a follow-up. So um, how much flow is considered for flow restoration? Is it a percentage of the conserved water from the project or is it a percent of the total water right? Um, so we are not setting a particular um, rate or percentage in terms of this program, I would say going back to my response about the allocation of conserved water program, I know that, for example, that program does have some specific percentage requirements associated with it, and I believe it's at least 25% in stream, but I absolutely would defer to folks at Water Resources Department. Um, we're happy to connect um, you up with the right folks at WRD who are working in the conserved water program so um, we can understand specifically given the project that you're proposing relative to if that is the um, particular administrative tool that would be utilized to conserve water, what um, the final determination would be for that and whether it's funding based or um, water right based relative to your particular project. Thanks, Renee. That's all the questions that we have right now. All right, so I wanna make a final plug for those folks who asked some really good questions about, you know, I think pending organizational recognition, the um, well drilling, the conserved water piece, please make sure to put your contact information in the Q&A um, that will go to um, a web staff so we can do some follow-up with you to get a little bit more information and make sure we're connecting dots with the right folks from other um, agencies. So with that, um, thanks to each one of you for taking time out of your Monday morning to join us for the webinar, learn a little bit more about the program. Please do spend a little bit of time reviewing the um, documents that I pointed you to. Feel free to reach out um, as questions are coming up. If you um, have new questions that emerge once you go into the online system and start looking at the statewide irrigation modernization grant system. Um, again, so Heidi Hartman is primary point for this program. Amy Charette um, is also help, incredibly helpful source of information. So please um, take the opportunity if you have questions to reach out to, to OWEB staff and we can work through um, questions that you have. 
as you're hopefully um, contemplating and then submitting uh, grant applications to the program. So thanks so much to each of you and we'll sign off for the day. Take care.